Hello friends, welcome to Vidya Mandir classes live at Flipplan. In this session, we will be talking about the first chapter of chemistry, that is some basic concepts of chemistry. One of the very important chapters, it actually helps us understand how we will be doing the calculations in chemistry. In the journey, so in a way, it is one of those most necessary chapters that you as a student should be knowing. The very important part of this chapter stoichiometry is mole concept. Mole concept. See, you would be wondering that, sir, why are you simply starting with a point? Mole concept. What is this one mole? See, uh, when you, in your daily life, you know, you, you must have bought bananas. So there you would have used a term called dozen, right? Okay, what does it mean? What does that mean? Tell me, yeah, it is 12. One dozen is 12, right? If you buy one dozen bananas, it's like you are buying 12 bananas, right? And you all must be a good fan of maybe Sachin or Virat, right? Who are hitting centuries after centuries and centuries. So what do you mean by a century? So century means 100, right? Okay. So we basically are using a particular word for a given number. Okay. So when you're talking about mole, we basically are saying that one mole is equal to 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 units. So these units can be of anything. Suppose it can be of one mole of grain of sugar. So what does it mean? It means that there are basically 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 grains of sugar. Okay. Now the idea is, I mean, you can ask me a question over here. That's why are we actually talking about this particular part? See, in chemistry, you will have to talk about atoms and molecules, and which are the basic units of matter, right? And they are very, very small. The mass is very, very small. So we will not be able to talk in terms of one atom or two atom or three atom. So we needed an aggregation. And that is the reason why we have picked up this one mole, which is equal to 6.02 to 10 square 23 units. And this number is also termed as Avogadro's number. This number is also termed as Avogadro's number. Okay, we represent it by Na and is equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 20. Okay, so now, okay, uh, so we have got Nitikya uh, over here with us. Hi Nitikya. Yeah, so he's got a doubt. Okay, let's pick up what is the doubt that Nitikya is asking. He is saying, sir, why is the number 6.022 into 10 to the power 23? is Avogadro number. From where? I mean, what is the significance of this Avogadro number? Okay, I'll add on to it that uh, from where we have got this number as well, right? See, uh, when we talk about significance, as I told earlier also, that we are talking about the atoms and molecules in chemistry, which are very, very small, so we need to aggregate it. Uh, now, you might find it a bit difficult to understand, so why we need to aggregate? So, I'll give you one reason for it, or one example. Rather to say, suppose you go, go to a grocery shop and you want to buy sugar. Right? Now you tell this guy, uh, Uncle, I want 5000 grains of sugar. What do you think he's gonna react like? <laughs> Will he react normal? Huh? What 5000 grains of sugar? Who asks for, uh, for this 5000 grains? Nobody says like that. You know, you're wrongly fed. You should either ask half a kg of sugar or one kg of sugar or whatever, right? So the point is when you're talking about small size particles, you don't count them, you aggregate, right? So similarly over here, what we have done is we have done the aggregation over here, okay? So now the question arises, but why exactly this particular number? From where this particular number is coming up? So the answer to this is that the mass of atom is measured in terms of is measured in terms of 
AMU. Now, what is this AMU? AMU is nothing but atomic. AMU is atomic mass unit. Okay. So when we want to measure the mass of any one atom, we will simply say that atomic mass is equal to number of proton plus number of neutrons in AMU. So for example, if I'm asking the mass of carbon 12, you just said it has got six protons and six neutrons. So the value will be 12 U. U stands for one AMU, right? Okay. So basically over here, we want to say that are measuring the mass of atom in terms of AMU. Now, Avogadro's number is nothing but the inverse of 1 AMU. How? See, this is 1 by 1.66 into 10 raised to power minus 24 gram. So over here, when you are talking about the mass of carbon, mass of one atom of carbon, it will be this. Now you tell me, is it possible for you to measure this value of mass. At the max, you have measured in milligrams, not below that, right? So how come you can measure 10 to the power minus 24? It's just next to impossible, right? So that is why we needed a bigger number. So we, what we did, we just inversed it. When you solve it out, it will be 10 to the power 24 upon 1.66 which is 10 into 10 raised to power 23 upon 1.66. So this 10 divided by 1.66 comes out to be 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23. Got it? So this is how we have got the Avogadro's number. See, it was such an easy job for Avogadro. He just inverse the AMU and now everybody uses Avogadro's number. So a lot of scope for you guys also. You all guys also can, you know, ask such questions and you know, come to this answer. And this is what is our pedagogy. We want you to ask questions, a lot of questions, okay? So you guys have got your study material, wherein you have got your theory, wherein you have got your questions in the form of paper exercise, in the form of objective work worksheet, in the form of illustrations, in the form of subjective solved examples, all right? So you got a plethora of questions. So any doubt in the question that they get that you are having, from any in chapter exercise? If it is so, please ask. And I hope whatever you ask for is it clear. Okay, this is clear. Great. Yeah. So, any questions from Nitagir's side? Yeah. So, he wants to know, he wants to have the access for my, he wants to, you know, uh, talk to me. Okay, great. See, you can easily talk to me. No issues whatsoever. So, I've given you the mic, right? Now, Nitikya, you are online. Please speak. Hi, sir. Hi. Okay. I, uh, as we have the study material, I was solving the in-chapter exercises. I have specific doubt in uh, question two of in-chapter exercise A. Oh. First of all, Nitikya, it's very good that you are following the schedule that we have given to you, the weekly schedule. To follow it, it is very, very important. And I can guarantee if you follow the schedule for the long two years, you will surely be successful and you'll get into IIT. Oh, number one. Second, the question that you are asking for is a real good question. Most of the students get stuck in this particular question. Right? The question is that from 200 milligrams of carbon dioxide, if 10 raised to power 21 molecules are removed, how many grams of CO2 are Okay, so now let's solve this question. This is very, very easy. Okay, let me go to the whiteboard. Now, what is the question saying? It says that you have got you've got some amount of CO2. Okay, from there you have removed some amount. So I am needed to find out the remaining amount. Okay. This is the basic structure of the question that you have asked. Okay. 
and for other students let me tell you that this is the question from in chapter exercise a okay and it is question number two. okay so other students also can note down because it's a very 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 important question okay now see amount of co2 which is given is 200 milligrams so 200 milligrams means 200 into 10 is to power minus 3 grams okay. number of the what is the amount of co2 removed what they have done is they have removed 10 raised to power 21 particles okay now see when you are given the number of atoms what is the first thing that you should do you should convert it into number of moles okay how do you convert it to number of moles if one mole contains 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 particles or if 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 particles is equal to one mole this is the number which is equal to 1 mole. 10 raised to the power 21 will be equal to how many moles? 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23. Uh, right? Okay. Now, this is the number of moles of carbon dioxide that you have got. Okay. But please look over here. Here you have got mass in grams. Right? So, what do you need to do? You need to convert these moles into grams. Now, 1 mole of CO2 is equal to 44 grams. Okay, if one mole of CO2 is equal to 44 grams, these many moles of CO2 is equal to how many grams? So this is simply multiplied by 44, right? Now all you have to do is solve this question, solve the, and you'll get the answer over here in grams. Okay, fine. So I hope this point is clear to you, and you always remember that you need to solve the, do the calculation by your hand. Please do not use the calculators because you get very, very less time in the JE mains and the JE advanced exam. And believe you me, one of the most important elements for success is fast calculations. Okay. So I hope you understood this particular part, the question and the concept. Right.